Today on Houston Life, we are tracking Tropical Storm Nicholas. Emergency shelters are gearing up to open their doors, and we're seeing how they're preparing to offer a place to keep you and your family safe from the storm. Plus, we'll meet one local teen who is partnering with the Houston Humane Society to help raise funds for our furry friends. Find out how you can help give back. Then, from being a contestant on season 18 of Bravo's Project Runway to hosting the show spinoff, local designer Alan Gonzalez chats about his well deserved redemption. And while you're hunkering down to weather the storm, why not binge a new show? Hollywood A-lister Adrian Grenier joins us with more on his new Netflix crime thriller, Clickbait. All that and more straight ahead on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life. It is Monday, September 13th. I'm Courtney Savala. And I'm Derek Shore. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for sticking with us also during this 3 o'clock hour. Very wet day in Houston. Absolutely. As we are preparing for Tropical Storm Nicholas, of course, all of our crews are preparing for that. We'll have the very latest coming up in weather. And then, of course, the news at 4 o'clock. We have text with us today. We are hoping that you guys are geared up, ready to go. I know school campuses are getting ready to close, but um, hopefully y'all had a great weekend. We did something really cool that I haven't done in a bit. In a bit. What was that? So uh, Connor actually had a study class on Sunday. So AJ turned to me and said, Mom, since Connor can't do anything, how about we go to the zoo? Oh. I said, you know what? That is a fantastic idea. How fun. Yesterday was so perfect. We bought our tickets online. And, you know, they, a part of it's under construction for the Galapagos Islands, the, the new exhibit that will come next year. But... I, AJ just took me around to all the different exhibits. He loves the reptile house, loves the bug house. We got to see the bears, Willow, and he remembered, you know, we did this, um, the Pantanal um, exhibit when the zoo opened. Uh, we took the boys out, we did all these fun stories, and he said, Mom, we were here, we shot a story here. I said, oh no, we did, we shot a story here at the zoo. He goes, no, right here. So he remembers everything very specific about the zoo, but it was absolutely wonderful. It's so great go. that he knows his way around. The zoo is one of my favorite spots in the city in Herman Park there. There's so much to do. You can rent I those little know. paddle boats, get out on the water, go for a run, have a little lunch at the cafe. I'm glad you got out. I know. It was Beat so much fun. Absolutely. It was a lovely day, but you got fancy this weekend, huh? We did. We dressed up. We missed you at the Houston no, Symphony. It's one um, of my favorite places. It, we love the symphony, and it felt so good to actually get dressed up and go someplace. It's been a while since that happened. This is downtown at Jones Hall. Brandon and I put on our Tuxes, and we I went out. You could clean up a little bit better. <laughs> so there's Renee Fleming on stage. Lovely. I'm a huge fan of yours, uh, the conductor, Stephen Reinecke. And then afterward, the gala happened down at the Corinthian, lovely. which was lovely to run into uh, to a lot of friends, people we hadn't seen in a long time, including some friends of Houston Life, uh, the timpanist, oh. Leo, Leonardo yes. Soto, who's recovering from a recent knee surgery, feeling a lot better. So it was great to get out and have a fun night out. And best of all, this evening, it raised 200, I'm sorry, 600,000, $600,000 to help support the symphony's community and education-based programs. It reaches 200,000 Houstonians every single year. And just to give you an example, one of the things that they did uh, during COVID is a music therapist would do these virtual bedside visits mm -hmm. for folks who are sick uh, at MD Anderson in, undergoing cancer treatment. So they do all kinds of community outreach and involvement uh, to reach people who perhaps cannot get dressed up and go out to the theater. It's really great. Our symphony, you know, our arts program here in our city is so fantastic. And what a better way to do it on the weekend of 9-11. I mean, just to kind of have this unity, a platform where you can feel uh, thankful and grateful and be together, hear some beautiful music and be around other people, you know, and just kind of celebrate the moment. I think is really lovely. And it certainly is what our hearts all kind of needed that evening because like like you did and like many of us did just watching the 20th anniversary coverage <gasps> of 9-11 yeah. on Saturday, hearing the names read and hearing the, the bells ringing. Uh, it was just a very somber sort of introspective morning. So it was nice to finish the weekend with that. Absolutely. Well, you both looked very handsome if I do say so myself. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it was you had a, good a fantastic time. time. Well, as the Texas coast weathers Tropical Storm Nicholas, the American 
American Red Cross. They are working quickly to help those who live in flood prone areas find safe shelter. They're really working overtime, right? Because of course they've helped our neighbors in Louisiana as well. Joe Sam is at the Texas Gulf Coast region right off the Southwest Freeway with what you need to know about locations and disaster kicks as well as volunteering. Hi, Joe. Hey, Courtney, Derek, yeah, that's right. So we do want to give you that information right away. The only location that's been released at this point is the one in Kingsville, Texas, that's located on 2210 South Brahma Boulevard. They're trying to work really quickly, like you just said, to get other shelters around the area opened up and ready to go for those visitors to come in. What's really hard about getting those shelters open is that they want to make sure they have the beds, the pillows, blankets, and everything ready to go. You can already see video right now. Courtney, you mentioned them helping our neighbors in Louisiana. That that was during Hurricane Ida that really showed them that commitment to the community. They want to make sure they get more of those volunteers to help get all of that up and going now that we're facing Tropical Storm Nicholas. So they need those volunteers to come in and get those shelters up and going. There is only one location open right now, but as many more locations start to open, we're going to have that up for you on our website, HoustonLife.tv. We want to give you those lists really, really quickly, especially for people that are leaving right now, trying to evacuate to those shelters give yourselves extra time to do so because there's also telling you that you want to make sure you bring your personal identification any type of driver's license that you have to show who you are they're going to get their workstation set up so that they have that ready to go to and put into the systems there's also telling you to bring your disaster recovery kit that includes any type of prescription medication your personal hygiene products blankets pillows as well as anything else you need as far as a digital copy of all of those important documents that you want to make sure are saved if your home or area does tend to flood. They're asking for you to bring all of that along with you. And if you do have children, to bring any type of formula, diapers, or toys to keep them occupied. Those shelters are being put up right now because they're expecting it to bring at least 20 inches of rain, and they're really trying to get that up and going for everyone to get to those shelters. Again, that shelter that's open right now is in Kingsville, Texas, located at 2210 South Brahma Boulevard. And as soon as the American Red Cross starts to send out more of those locations and more of those shelters that are opening. We will have that list for you on our website, HoustonLife.tv. But like I said, I've been back in Louisiana whenever Hurricane Ida hit. I was helping with a lot of people there, get the shelters going, and even my family, helping them make sure that the house was all sandbagged and ready to go. You do want to make sure those preparations are put in place before you head out to the shelter, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Help our neighbors, not only in Louisiana, but also here in Texas. And when we come back, we're going to tell you exactly Exactly how you can do that and volunteer and where you can go to sign up to volunteer to help out with Tropical Storm Nicholas. But right now we're going to send things back to you guys in the studio. Courtney Derrick. Joe, great, very comprehensive and a great list of information that you provided as well. We'll see you in just a bit. We do want to let you all know you may have just received a push alert from Click to Houston. You heard Judge Hidalgo say, don't go to that concert tonight. We're talking about Harry Styles. It has officially been postponed now. So if you were planning to go to that concert, not happening tonight. And as the judge said as well, wherever you are going tonight, get there by 6 p.m. and stay there. Do not be on the roads, if at all possible. All right, when we come back, the heartwarming way one local teen is helping heartworm positive dogs find forever homes. And later, Houston native Alan Gonzalez resurfaces with a new fashion collection. He's going to be joining us in studio with an exclusive preview. Houston Life will be right back. In honor of Adopt a Less Adoptable Pet Week, we are shining a spotlight on a local teen who's spreading awareness for heartworm positive dogs. While volunteering with the Houston Humane Society, Riley Burwell noticed some pups were often getting passed over because of their condition. Through some creative fundraising, she's helping to sponsor their treatment and find forever homes for them. Awesome is camp here at Houston Humane Society, and we have kids come here to hang out with the animals and get them the time to be played with. We do fun activities, and it's just a really great time here. While here at Camp Possum, I noticed that the heartworm positive dogs weren't getting as much attention, and people are afraid of them because they don't know what heartworms are. They get heartworms from mosquitoes, especially since it's hot and humid in Houston. It's easy for them to get bit and get heartworms. <laughs> 
school, I actually joined a leadership program here at Houston Humane Society, and we did a project, and I decided to fundraise for Heartworm Positive Dogs. I sold dog cookies, I made art and commissions for people to buy, and all of it goes to the heartworm treatment here. This cat painting I actually made for my art class. I donated it here to the Humane Society to put in the FIV cat room. It's a passion of mine and a hobby. I get inspiration from the animals and like colors and stuff. It takes me a very long time, but I love doing it. I've raised $500 so far. $1,000 is my goal, so I'm halfway there. On the right is Luna and on the left is Leo. They're both heartworm positive and seven year old and they arrived here July 15. The most thing that I enjoy volunteering here is seeing all the animals and when you're a volunteer here, you get to go and help them and make them socialize more and help hopefully get them a home. I actually have seven pets at home. Yeah, I have a lot of pets, but I love all of them so much. And we actually adopted one of my dogs here and me and my mom love it here. It's really nice and it's a nice organization. I hope that they um, realize that heartworm dogs um, are in need of a home and that I hope they just recognize them more because they're not recognized. Because all animals deserve the attention and the love. What incredible work. I'd like to take them all home. So sweet. A quick update, by the way, pop date on Teo and Luna, who we are seeing on screen. The two siblings were happily adopted together earlier this month, and both of their heartworm treatments were sponsored by the Houston Humane Society. And to learn more about how you can help other heartworm positive dogs, we do have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Such a great story. A positive one. A positive story. <laughs> also, a reminder that KPRC2 has teamed up with Telemundo Houston and Animal Shelters in our area for NBC's Clear the Shelters initiative. Local shelters are offering no cost or reduced fee adoptions or waived pet spaying and neutering fees now through September 19th. And for a list of participating shelters and more information, just go to click2houston.com slash pets. All right, as we head to break, uh, we're going to be back with the latest on Tropical Storm Nicholas and a live update from our KPRC2 news team. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday, a rainy one at that at 3.30. That's right. Let's check in now with Keith, Frank, and Andy for a look at your top headlines, including today's biggest headline, guys. That's, of course, the weather. Oh, it, it, certainly, it certainly is what everyone is thinking about this afternoon. We want to turn things over to Frank. He's going to give us an update because this is what we have been watching now for uh, several days at this point. Yeah, we've had those bands of rain. They began this morning and they moved on shore and then we got a break, but it seems like we're getting more rain and less of a break with this, Frank. Yeah, you know, it's not really messy out there for the afternoon commute. There's no question about it. Just looking at different city cams, we got these showers that are poised offshore, and with the system down to the south, that's going to help pull all of this in our direction, especially coastal counties and one county inland. That includes the Houston area. This is the one o'clock advisory, and you can see the track. And I think that this system is going to end up on the right side of this track, to be honest with you. But the track, if you follow that middle line, uh, goes right into Matagorda Bay, then right through Wharton. County and up through Fort Bend into Houston. So we really have all night to deal with this all evening and then into the overnight, generally out of here by tomorrow afternoon. But we've got to get that 12 hours out uh, out from under us. So you should get to wherever you need to be by seven o'clock tonight and plan on staying there for the duration of this because it's going to get messy around here with very heavy rain in some spots. You can see this is exact track radar right now. This is the, the eye, so to speak, the center of this. It's not well formed. It's not uh, really strengthening. There's a lot of dry air on land that it's pulling in here, so it can't really wrap around too much. So I think this is the four o'clock advisory is going to be interesting. They may end up shifting this uh, uh, center anyway over here a little bit more to the northeast, and then that would take it generally right toward Brazoria County. 
Though regardless, moving across eastern Harris County up through Liberty and the Lake Livingston area would bring a lot of rain as we go into the overnight. Some rainfall totals so far, two, five, three inches of rain. So we've already had some significant showers today, and we're going to see some more as we go into the night. The winds haven't been too impressive, but 24 in Galveston, so it's certainly breezy there, and they've had some gusts to 33. 22 in Sugarland, Wharton at 23. We'll go over some forecasts at 4 o'clock as, as far as what the winds are forecast to be, but we can certainly get up to about 45, 50 mile an hour winds pretty easily. So there's a look at exact track radar. I want to show you this uh, eye of the system such as it is and talk about that a little more because I think that rain shield you see, that's going to be, I think, very important as to which way this is going. And it, more and more I, I look at this, it's just, it's just not very distinct. And I think it's just getting sheared apart a lot by these winds coming back around it from the south side. So with that in mind, I think we'll continue to see at least some action as we go into this evening. There's a look at the eye right there. So that will take it about 88 miles and it's moving north at uh, 12. So if you just kind of do the math, I think we're looking at mid evening, nine, maybe 10 o'clock before an actual landfall, but it could end up moving even a little more toward Galveston Island. So it's a little early even now to say. So with that in mind, the future cast keeps this rain in here, especially through eight o'clock, right on into the overnight. There's one in the morning. And then as we go into the overnight, that's 6 a.m. So so the 6 to 6 is a good window, it looks like, of heavy rains coming in here from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And by that, don't focus too much on these specific numbers, but notice anywhere from almost 6, 7, 8, 10 inches of rain possible from Houston to the coast. If you're back out to the west, don't think you're going to be too affected by this. The flash flood watches continue. The extreme rains continue, especially through tomorrow. We're in the high threat for Tuesday, and then things begin to shift off toward Louisiana. The storm surge threat for you folks down along the coast and that includes the bay, three to five foot above ground level for the storm surge. So watch out there. The heavy rain will start for a lot of you already has, especially along the coast. Watch for overnight flooding, a messy morning commute. It exits tomorrow and then it's clearing by Tuesday evening. We'll have a whole lot more at four o'clock. New update by then. Frank, thank you. We have several crews all over the Houston area covering Tropical Storm Nicholas. Let's check in with our Robert Arnold. Yeah, he's live in Galveston with a look at storm preps there, Robert. Yeah, we're down here in Jamaica Beach, and the closer that Nicholas gets to shore, the choppier the waters of the Gulf get. We're already starting to see some little areas of street ponding through this area of Jamaica Beach, and that's, if you look over here, that's because some of these smaller drainage ditches are starting to fill up quickly. We're not having too many severe rain bouts at this point, but again, that rain is just going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming, and so the worry out here is going to be the street flooding. Right now, FM 3005 is passable, no problems there, and they don't expect that to become impassable county officials don't throughout the course of this storm. However, you have to be very careful in these neighborhoods, these low-lying areas along canals, of course, closer to the Gulf where these storm drains fill up and the water starts just pooling in the streets. So that's why they're asking, as you heard Frank say, everybody to be off the roads and where they're going to be by 6 p.m. and stay put until the sun comes up tomorrow morning because they do expect there is going to be flooding in the area. They're just not sure to what extent, so they don't want anybody taking any chances. But for now, we've seen some businesses closing down, people getting a the last few supplies and trying to get where they're going to be for the remainder of the evening. Reporting live from Jamaica Beach, Robert Arnold, KPRC 2 News. All right, Robert, thank you. Also coming up at 4 o'clock, we're going to have the latest on school closings, including some important information regarding the Harry Styles concert tonight at the Toyota Center. Want to get back to Derek and Courtney. All right, Keith and Andy, we will see you in just a bit. A lot of people very disappointed about yeah. the concert, but uh, it's for the best. That's right. Postponed. 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 Do not worry. So with the potential threat of Tropical Storm Nicholas forcing many from their homes, the American Red Cross will be in urgent need of extra assistance. That is so true. Let's check back in with Joe Sam, who's at the Texas Gulf Coast Region Chapter now with how you can help. Hey, Joe. Hey guys, that's right. So just to give you a layout of the land right now, you can already see a lot of those storms already starting to come down, the rain and wind picking up right now. So we're standing underneath the covered area so that we can give you this report. They're looking for a lot of those volunteers to come in and help right now. We said in the earlier report that they are going to need a lot of those volunteers because many of the volunteers they already had on hand are still helping in Louisiana for Hurricane Ida. So they're looking for you to come and help now with Tropical Storm Nicholas. And the way you do that is it's super simple. All you have to do is head over to the Red Cross app that's right now online, the emergency app. We have a way that you can actually help out, video that you can show that we can help out right now and sign up to help 
help out and volunteer. It's user friendly. All you have to do is put in the area zip code that you're going to be living in right there or helping out in. It's going to pull up different shelter locations that's available and then where you can go and lend a helping hand. You put in that, you're going to fill out your information, your name, and of course, give them your COVID information as well. So all of that is going to be laid out for you, including that COVID information. I wanted to hit back on that again. Whenever those shelters are going to start opening up, they are going to be laying out everything as far as COVID is concerned. They're going to be keeping everything six feet apart. They're wanting people to come in, no matter the status that you are, to help out. Of course, everyone's going to be wearing masks there. Those who are staying at those shelters and those who are volunteering at those shelters, we're going to have that link up for you to sign up to volunteer. They're looking for those volunteers right now because they don't have as many as they need to start opening up those shelters as quickly as it needs to be because we're expecting Tropical Storm Nicholas to make that landfall today. They're asking for a lot of those volunteers to start signing up right now so that more of those shelters can open up. Again, the only shelter right now that's open is in Kingsville, Texas. That's located on 2210 South Broadland Boulevard. We're going to have that up as well and we're going to continue to check back in with the American Red Cross as they continue to give us more locations, more shelters shelters that are opening up. We're going to give you all of that information on our website, HoustonLife.tv. But again, make sure you go and download their app, the American Red Cross Emergency App, and sign up to volunteer. Helping out and lending a helping hand is what we're needed for during these times, especially how bad these storms get out here in Texas and Louisiana. For right now, back to you guys. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Volunteers definitely needed. They are taxed, of course, because a lot of the volunteers are in Louisiana, so they definitely need more people here as we braced for Nicholas to make landfall. Well, coming up, our friend and from the Project Runway to the Houston Live Studio, Houston designer and Bravo TV alum Alan Gonzalez shares an exclusive look at his new fall collection. Very much looking forward to that, but first, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who's got a look at a brand new Netflix series starring one of my buddies, Lauren. That's right, Derek. Still to come, I'm chatting with actor Adrian Grenier about his new Who Done It series. It's called Clickbait. It's going to have you on the edge of your seat. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Netflix thriller series Clickbait. Adrian Grenier stars as family man Nick Brewer, who's abducted in a crime with a creepy online twist, and those closest to him race to uncover to find out who's behind it and why. I got to chat with Adrian and his co-star actress Betty Gabriel all about this Who Done It series that will have you guessing until the very end. Is it work? Is it work? This is a message for Nick's kidnapper. He is a husband, a father. A brother. He's kind, loving, and gentle. I love you, son. You've made a terrible mistake. Let him come home. It's a long way. All right, new thriller, clickbait, Adrian Grenier. You play Nick Brewer, and I just wanted to strangle you at times, but why don't you go ahead, set the scene of the show, and tell everybody about your character. Yeah, I, this is a classic who done it thriller and i challenge anyone to try and figure it out before the last episode and i promise you're not going to be able to do it yeah you know uh, what i started with blonde hair and look what happened that's me guessing the entire time and look where it got me i was totally wrong <laughs> basically i i'm told my character is told through the eyes of all the other characters so each episode you get to know a little bit more about me but from their perspective uh so not all you know it, is what meets the eye so you have to really uh, watch to the end now betty you play nick's wife and at times i was like i love betty i'm behind betty and then i wanted to kind of strangle you too <laughs> was she a fun character to play sophie brewer is a very human person she's a human being and she that's even a line <laughs> that she says um she's extremely fallible and she's extremely vulnerable to um being psychologically you know tormented and she is throughout the series and um there's just like a lot she she has to process and she has to do so in a public way and that she, she also has her family to really um, lean on and take care of, especially her sons. You mentioned 
social media and, and it's all about catfishing and people really playing games with a lot of people online. It's really scary and dangerous these days. But Adrian, a couple of months ago, randomly, uh, I got to meet you. Myself, my boyfriend are big fans and he actually looks a lot like you. So do you think that you could be catfished by him? Oh, that's, <laughs> I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear we'll never try to catfish you, but he would play your body double or, double or stunt double if given the opportunity. Listen, if it's to get reservations at a restaurant, you go, go for it. <laughs> well, the new thriller Clickbait now streaming on Netflix. It will have you guessing till the end. Betty, you do a great job. Adrian, of course, you do too. Thank you so much for giving our viewers the preview, and we look forward to watching it. Let me tell you something. Once you start this show, I promise you will not be able to stop watching until the very end. And for more of my interview with the cast of Clickbait, head over to HoustonLife.tv. What did you guys think? Adrian and Gabriel look pretty oh, similar. Yes, girl. They're like <laughs> twins. It's crazy. And I love that you had the picture to show him and that he remembered it. I know. I looked a little bit creepy coming off. It was Fredericksburg, off. right? It was in Fredericksburg, a random Sunday afternoon. It was just so timely. It was crazy how that all came together. Yeah. It, it's also great great to see Adrian's career doing. I mean, he has his hands involved in like in eco-friendly laundry Absolutely. detergents. He's doing this Netflix show. So I always appreciate when someone can have a career that spans the decades. For sure. And clickbait. Y'all, oh, it does look kind of creepy, huh? It is insane. so good. It is so good. You will never guess how it's going to end. I can just assure you that. Binge worthy. Yeah. Good tease. Sure. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Sure. Well, coming up, we chat with Bravo TV's Project Runway alum, Alan Gonzalez. He's giving us a sneak peek of his fall collection and all the details on his new hosting gig. Can't wait to catch up with you. Yeah, you do not want to miss that. Houston Life will be right back. Well, welcome back. You know, after an early exit on Bravo's Project Runway season 18, local designer Alan Gonzalez is getting a full circle moment as the host of the show's new digital series, Project Runway Redemption. And guess what? He's joining us now in studio ahead of the launch of his new collection. It's so great to see Thank you back you. in it's studio. Thank you. It's great to be here, Courtney. Honestly, I love Houston. Y'all know that. Know. And yeah, look at us now. Look at all we're doing. It's so crazy. So we went back into our Instagram photos and figured out it was January 20th, 2020, the last time you were here right. in studio. What's so crazy, Alan, is part of that collection before the, pa the, the shutdown yes. actually happened, but part of that collection that year were masks. You Correct. had that part of the look <laughs> yes. before we knew it was going to be part of our look. I swear I didn't know, Courtney. I swear. I didn't do it. I didn't predict anything. Um, I knew we would eventually get there. I didn't think it would be this soon, but it's all right. You know, we're, we're doing we're doing fashionably masks and we're making it happen. We are. You have to continue it and I love that because Alan Tude is still making masks, one of a kind designs. You moved to New York and began working um, in the costume design field for TV productions. What Correct. Were you doing? So I've been super busy working on costumes for TV. I've done two different shows. We did season two of Legendary and we're getting ready for season three. It's coming out on HBO Max. And then I also worked on a new show called The Quest and that'll be coming out on Disney Plus early of next year. I can't say too much on that one, but it's gonna be a good one. Okay, so this is super exciting. Ring, refresh everybody, because you're from Houston. Correct. You, uh, you know, breaking, it, it can happen, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The dream can become reality as what you're living. Oh, 1000%. I mean, you gotta go out there and you gotta make it, and if the opportunity isn't there, you find it. Everything that I did was here in Houston first. You know, I graduated college and then I continued to do things here in Houston. I did my own fashion shows, which is what we continue to do, and that's why I'm back. I want to continue to do those fashion shows here in Houston. And stay, gonna, stay grounded. Exactly. We're going to give more information about your event that's coming up this weekend, but let's talk about what kind of started the, the whole TV thing for you, which was Project Runway. You were at season 18, right. but now it's time for redemption, everybody. <laughs> Redemption. So talk about this latest project. I'm so excited about this one. They called me up. Bravo was like, hey, Alan, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, what am I not doing? What do you need me for? <laughs> what do you need me for? <laughs> and, then, and then they told me, they pitched me the whole idea. It's this great concept that is about giving contestants that didn't make it that far a second opportunity to kind of redeem themselves. And so it's eight different contestants. They all compete. And at the end of it, whoever wins, they get $25,000. The judge is Nina Garcia. It's this fun, fun, fun show. And I'm the host. So... <laughs> 
Congrats. Talk about a redemption. Right, but congratulations. That is thank really you. fantastic. And I thank think you, it's you, wonderful to be in that hosting spot, back with Nina, of course, but to see people really given an opportunity to really succeed, right? Right, right, right. If it if it didn't work out one time, you just keep going. And That's you right. and you do more and you do bigger and you go bigger, bigger, bigger. I and look at it. us now. I know, and look at us now. Let's <laughs> talk about your new collection because we have a couple of looks that we're gonna debut here yes. today. We have our first model who is ready and this is Jocelyn yes. and walk us through this look here and this is this is a little bit more casual that I to know see. normally I don't do casual but I wanted to give us this day wear top it's this beautiful little coral print it's got these puffy sleeves I mean you can take this anywhere you can really just go anywhere in this and I can see you Courtney immediately in this so we'll talk later okay but it's it's great we've got the matching mask you know Alan Tude is still doing our thing and this will debut on Saturday with our with our whole new collection. It's all underwater themed. So this time I was really inspired by those deep corals, those deep, you know, coral reefs everywhere. Right. And that's that's what's happening here. I mean, it's just a fun top. It's a beautiful top. I can I love that you paired it with jeans, but we could definitely um, dress that up as well. The strong shoulder. Listen, right. I'm ready to wear that to the grocery store. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I need a strong shoulder to push the cart. I love it, and I definitely want to talk more about that. Okay, our second look is Brittany. And let's talk about this because this is a show stopper. Thank you. This is so this is if Alan's doing streetwear, this is what it looks like. She is going to New York Fashion Week. Mm. She is giving you the new styles. It is this beautiful corset top, right? It's got these sleeves that are happening here. And it's actually paired up with a cargo pant. And it's all in this beautiful two-tone. Uh, taffeta. It's really, really exciting, honestly. I, I love it. And when, usually when we think taffeta, we think stiff and heavy. Right. This is flowy. It has movement. It looks light. The jewel tone. I love the white booty with it. It's fantastic. And it's two pieces. And it's all, yeah, it's all three pieces. You oh, can three. all accessorize it. The sleeves are separate. The corset's separate. The pants are separate. You can just mix and match and do everything that you want with it. I love it. Change in the world one corset at a time. One corset Ellen. at a time. Yes. Okay, our third look is going to be Linda, and this is very signature for you, right. talking about your gowns, and this is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, thank you. This is our evening wear, and you know, the show will really feel like that when you go this Saturday. It'll take you from day wear, and it'll take you all the way to night wear. I've got this beautiful, beautiful, like deep blue in the two-tone taffeta again. It comes with a built-in pearl and diamond necklace onto mm. the gown and then that beautifully embroidered sheer fabric that's giving you those waves, it's giving yes. you that coral, it's giving you that underwater feel. So she's really, you know, she's really coming up to the surface. Yes. I named this collection Resurfaced because it's been a while since I've been able to show a collection and I'm excited to really just bring it back, bring us back into fashion. And we are so excited to celebrate you. Let's talk about your big fashion show Thank because you. the Allen Tude Fall Show is happening on Saturday, September 18th. This is at Momentum Rock Climbing Gym at Sawyer Yards. What a better place to do this at. Doors open at 7.30. Tickets are available? Tickets are available right now. I would run. Okay. I would run to our website, Allen Tude Dot com and get your ticket now because they are selling really, really fast, but it's going to be a great show. It's at Momentum. We're taking over the whole rock climbing place, so you're going to be really just submerged in that space. We're going to have live rock climbers. The models are going to do their thing. I mean, it's a show. It's Allen Tude. Come on. Come on. Do not mistake. Do not miss this. We want to take one last look at all three looks that you brought with you today, Allen, all of the models. Thank you to Jocelyn, Brittany, and Linda showcasing all Allen Tude, and it's so wonderful to see you. Welcome home. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Congrats on the new gig and I can't wait to rock that top, that coral top. For sure. We'll see you Saturday, Courtney. Absolutely. And I love my mask, my mask that I wear of all of yours too, Alan too. <laughs> For tickets and more information, we've shared a link on the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. Definitely check it out. Stay right there. After the break, Houston Life will be right back. We do appreciate you being with us on this Monday. Of course, a busy news day, a busy weather day as we're preparing for tropical depression. Nicholas uh, to be rolling in here, but at least maybe we've given you this hour to decompress a little bit. Yeah, and it was great to see Alan Gonzalez as well. It's great that he's so busy. I'm very curious about his new show he's hosting as well. I know that digital series Project Runway Redemption. So lots of good stuff happening. All right, well, uh, bundle up, be safe out there and wherever you are, try to stay off the roads for the rest of the day because it certainly will be a wet one out there. Very dangerous as well. Absolutely. Let's toss it over to the news at four. We have Keith and Andy standing by. Hey, guys.